Welcome back for another teacher profile. We're here with Gail Winnie. She is one of two teachers of the year for 2008 for the San Juan Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Well, tell me about where you teach and, and what you teach. Well, I teach at Citrus Heights Elementary, which is on Auburn Boulevard in the San Juan Unified School District. I've been there for seven years now, and I'm a general classroom music teacher, and I'm one of 18 uh, primary music specialists. They call them music specialists now, but that's a music teacher. <laughs> and um, I teach first through sixth grade general music. And so is it chorus? Uh, is it choral? I mean, tell me what you touch upon uh, when you teach elementary students uh, about music. Elementary students, I teach them a little history, theory, sight singing, um, basic notation, reading notes, reading rhythms, um, some composition, a little bit of everything. Mm. Um, now, in this day and age when there seems to be such a strong emphasis on, you know, reading math and science, uh, it must be uh, kind of nice and fulfilling for you to be able to teach children uh, about music. It is, because music and all of art forms address um, emotional intelligence, which is important in our, our goal is to uh, be able to create these lifelong learners and send our kids off into society um, with the tools that they need and part of that is emotional intelligence but it's not only that because with music I am able to connect with every subject matter um, whether it be history um, and geography if I if I'm teaching a song um, for example if I'm teaching about merengue from the Dominican Republic um, my kids can look at geography and know about the Caribbean and how very close we are to Florida in the United States and um, my kids my kids know that this particular island has two islands Haiti and the Dominican Republic they can tell you that and it's all because of connecting mu with music to the other subject matters um, mathematics look at how the relationships with note reading and rhythm. Um, language arts, there was a study with Stanford last year that talked about how um, ear training, um, understanding the rapid succession of sounds, mm -hmm. how that can help people who have dyslexia. So you take music and you just weave it in through all the curriculum? Everything, yes. Do you find that challenging? I find it challenging because of the different grade levels and because, um, because I want to do a good job. I want to do the best job I possibly can. So it's challenging in the way that, um, you know, I have to be really disciplined and I have to study and, and be really, really well prepared uh, for it to go off well. Right. What do you think are some of the, the big challenges overall facing teachers these days? Right now? Yes. Um, I think the biggest challenge right now has to do with assessment. And um, I think that we really need to focus on classroom assessment. And I know myself, uh, on a personal level, that's something that I'm working on involving students more in their own learning, involving students in the, in the assessment process, um, more of an assessment for learning approach, um, so that there's a really good balance between things like state assessment, um, that type of summative assessment, and what goes on in a classroom. Now, what inspired you to be a teacher? Oh, I had, it's, I told you, I, I also um, am the education director for the Sacramento Philharmonic Orchestra. And it's really funny because it all started with the flute. I don't play the flute. Uh -huh. The reason why I don't play the flute is because I signed up for band class. I was given a flute. I took it home and I cleaned it with Comet and a Brillo pad. And I came back to class. And I was all excited. I was ready for band class. I took out my flute, and my teacher's face was like purple. And um, he never was unkind. <laughs> but I thought, I've seen that look before, and I 
think maybe he's not going to be real happy about something. Anyway, I destroyed this poor instrument. I took the finish off of it. It looked like nothing you can even imagine. And he sent me very graciously, took the flute, and he sent me to the choir room. And in the choir room is where the magic happened for me. I had a wonderful teacher, and her name was Gail Wade Hauser. And she, she was my classroom teacher for general music, just exactly what I do. And she was also my choir teacher all the way until eighth grade. So I had this person from third through eighth grade. And sadly, um, she fell ill with cancer when I was in college. Um, so I did, ha I did have some time to interact with her kind of as an adult. I was a very young adult, so my thinking's not really the same as it was then. I, don't, I think I appreciate her even more now. But my last, the last time I spent with her, she was ill and she was in bed. And, um, and I would go visit her. She was close to the junior college. She was living near Sac City College at the time, and I was attending Sac City College. And I would go visit her, and I can I have this picture of her being sick in bed, and but her eyes would just light up when I would come over with my backpack, mm -hmm. and she would um, she I can remember the last time I saw her. She's like, "How's school?" Um, and I said, "Well, it's good. Well, how are you doing in this subject? And how are you doing in this subject?" And I, "Where are you having problems?" And I said, "Well, I'm having problems with rhythmic dictation." That's when you hear something and you write it down, mm -hmm. a rhythm. I said, I'm having a hard time with that. She goes, well, get out a piece of paper and let's get to work. So even then she was teaching you? So, yeah, exactly. And so um, I, I think about things like that and, and the impact that she had on my life. And look at me. I, I'm a music teacher. It's all because of her and the example she gave me and the love that she gave me for music and a lot of things that have nothing to do with music at all. Um, and I think about her and um, my tribute to her and the best thing that I can do for music and for education is, is to be like her. You must find some students to be inspiring as well when you see uh, their eyes light up at some of their accomplishments. Oh, yeah. Yep. That you do. Now, uh, let me ask you this. Uh, there are a lot of uh, people out there who are thinking about teaching as a career. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say to someone who, who is thinking about it, thinking that it might be for them? What would, you do? What, would, what would be your sales pitch, I guess? I think that teaching is the most patriotic thing that one person can do. For me, this is the best thing that I can do for my community and for my country is that I go to work every day, and um, I teach kids and give them information that they need to become uh, productive members of society. And I have the power, I have a lot of power, I'm very careful with my power. <laughs> <laughs> You're powerful, yes. Yeah, I, I mean, I do. I influence 500 children a week in my school. That's very powerful and, and I respect that. Um, I, I'm aware of the influence that I have. They imitate me in ways that you would not even imagine. You know, one little girl dresses like me on the days I come to her class. She gets her little suit on, <laughs> a fourth grader. Um, but, you know, talking about um, service and serving my community and serving my country, um, I can teach children things that will affect my community and, and the United States, for that matter, long before I'm gone. The ideas that I give them, the things that I teach them, long before I'm gone. Well, we appreciate your time very much. We've been speaking with Gail Winnie, who is the one of two Teachers of the Year for 2008 for the San Juan Unified School District. Thanks for being with us.